It has finally happened. You have thumbed all the ups. You have added all the accounts. You have waited a bit too long. And now episode one of the Country Mouse City Mouse podcast is here. I am Dan and you can find me everywhere at RFS Dan. And I'm Jess and you can find me almost everywhere at Snow Dogs Vlogs. You can find us on Stitcher, Spotify, whatever android thing you guys use. And yes, people, iTunes. We are now on iTunes, which is a which is a good thing because I think more people listen on iTunes than anywhere else. I think we should do a poll in the group and uh, find out if that's true or not. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I, I think what I say is true. I know you hate Apple products, and anytime I have any issue at all, like you didn't text me back fast enough, and then it's like because I have an Apple device, not because I was busy or, or, or something else. It's always Apple related. It's always like, what, what do you say? Don't drink the juice. Don't drink the apple juice. Why do you hate Apple so much? Like, why? Why? I don't know. I mean, I have for like a long time and I, I really don't know that I have. A, wait, I know because they overcharge for everything. Is it is it at the point where you have to make something cool? It's too late and you have to stick to your guns and it's just Android or nothing. 100 percent. Well, the podcast is on Android, so I guess all people can be happy. And uh, when you compare a MacBook Pro to an Asus Republic of Gamers laptop and you look at what you can spend and you can get a good PC or what you can get a MacBook Pro for, yeah, I'm going to go for the PC. But you're paying for the experience, not all the lockups and reboots. I go to concerts for an experience. I buy a computer for work. (laughs) All right. All right. Wow, you really are passionate about that. I didn't didn't realize your your hatred for uh, Apple products was that deep. So uh, thanks to everybody that listened to our uh, episode zero test. I I didn't know what to expect, but the feedback was actually very, very good. I I thought so too. Yeah, we managed to work out all those uh, audio issues. So, you know, driver updates for the win. So what is going on in your town? It is like negative a million there. It's just blankets of snow. I I think if it was negative a million, we would be dead. Uh Uh, We are experiencing you know and that's not even entirely true tomorrow and tonight and into tomorrow we will be experiencing what they're calling a polar vortex it's what those of us in northern michigan prefer we prefer to call um winter (laughs) that's i don't know why i have to give it some fancy name like they're naming all these snowstorms and i'm going it's just winter guys it's winter michigan is okay i'm gonna clarify Lower Michigan is shut down because the people in upper michigan can handle a couple inches of snow without a problem right but pretty much everything is shut down. And for the first time in a really long time, even things in our town are closed. Like the grocery store closes. They're closing at six o'clock today. All the restaurants are closing down. Pretty much everything is closed. And they're telling us to stay off the roads, but we don't listen because we have Jeeps. You know, I was looking at your guys' Instagram story this morning and it looked like, like it's almost seemed reckless that you guys were out there. Is that true? Or is it just another day in the snow? It's just another day in the snow. I mean, it would be reckless if we were out there and we were trying to do 50 miles an hour where it's 50 miles an hour. You can't do that in the wintertime. You can't. You have to slow down. You have to realize that there is ice under the snow. The snow is blowing. The visibility is next to nothing. I think downtown we could only see about a half a block, maybe a full city block ahead of us, and that was it. So it's reckless if you go out there and you drive like you would on a sunny day, but if you've lived here your whole life and you know how to drive, even people that live here their whole life don't remember how to drive. But <laughs> if you go out there and you use your brain and you slow down, it's it's not reckless. They haven't told us technically that we have to stay off the roads yet, so we're still okay. But down in Lansing, Michigan, they're in a state of emergency, so they are not allowed. You're not allowed to be on the roads down there at all. Or they, if you go out on the roads and it's not for an emergency reason, they will give you a ticket. Dang. Is there ever a time ever where you're not you're just not allowed to go out at all? Like you have to stay inside? If the if the police or the town or the city or the county, if they actually put out an alert that says we're not supposed to be on the roads, they can ticket you. Um, last year, we I think it was last year, we had one snowstorm that was like that. And it was like 930 at night. And the drifts were over the road. And the, the problem was is the problem is. If you're out on the road and you're driving around and you're getting massive amounts of snowfall, this storm is very spread out. We're supposed to get seven to ten, inch, ten, seven to ten inches of snow over the next twenty-four hours. Where last year we had a snowstorm that dropped like twelve inches in like five hours. So when you get the snowstorms where it drops massive amounts fast, the problem is is that the road crews can't keep the roads cleared, and if they can't keep the roads cleared 
we have to stay off the roads because if we're out there, we're just making it harder for the road. The road people where, you know, accidents are happening. The emergency vehicles can't get to you because the roads aren't plowed. Right. Yeah. And it's already sketchy because at one point you we were all in the car. We were heading back to Alpina and I think we passed a snow plow, I think what it was. And the dude was like plowing the snow like it was a big industrial snow plow and it shot snow all over us. Oh, and yeah. That was scary. That was like yeah. really scary. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're supposed to you, you want to stay you want to give the plow guys space don't ride too close behind them. Don't it, ride real close next to them. It was everywhere. That snow was flying everywhere. Yeah, yeah that 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 happens. That's... We haven't. We're not where we're at right now. We're not in a state of emergency. I mean, yeah, our entire town is pretty much shutting down. But they haven't told us <laughs> to stay on the roads. <laughs> right, right. Uh, so you better bet when this is over, I'm going for a ride. <laughs> I can't believe it. The pictures that you sent me today, I've never seen, in all the years we've known each other, I've not seen snow that bad come from your camera. This is probably one of the more intense storms we've had in a long time. And I think the part of it is because we just got 10 inches of snow a couple days ago and we have so much snow sitting on the ground. So 10 more inches is just, it's an insane amount. Like there's just, there's no place. We're getting to the point now where there's no place to put it and it's only the very end of January. So we can probably expect this for at least another month, probably two to three months. Wow. That is crazy here. I'm looking out my window. It's 60 degrees. I'm staring at a palm tree and, uh, yeah, we don't have that problem, but when it does snow, maybe once every 10 years and we get half an inch of snow, our town's shut down for two days. We don't have to do anything for two days. Yeah. See, that's, that's, that's crazy. I, that's... Can, I can make a snowman, but I have to roll up all my snow and then I have to roll my snowball into the neighbor's yard and roll up their snow <laughs> and then roll that ball back into our yard, which it's a big bust because the whole grass is like cleaned off. So like you have to like be out there quick to steal the snow. Otherwise, like people will steal your snow off your yard. The snow that we have right now, you wouldn't be building any snowmans with because it so cold it's only what is it like 10 degrees out it's like minus five with the wind chill right now so it's too cold so for the snow fluff. to it's stick just... together okay it's fluff. that's the problem why i couldn't make a snow dam when we were out there is that the snow wasn't correct yeah you have to have the right temperatures to create snow that will pack together and you can actually build things out of it right now it's just they call it powder. it's just in that that's all it is right now it's literally just powder snow it'll blow around the problem with that though is Greg lives out in the country and he lives in a big open area with big open fields. And he just sent me a picture of his house where you can see grass. But up next to his house and next to his car, there's a drift almost as tall as his car. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. So the problem with the snow right now, and that's the reason that they're telling a lot of people, like that's the reason town is shut down. All the roads that leave town, anything that's by an open field where, or by the water where the wind can whip across, mm -hmm. it's creating giant drifts. So if you're in a little tiny car and now you have to try to drive through, blast through a drift that's three, four, five feet high, you're going to get stuck. You're going to, well, we're not, but you know, most people are going to get stuck. They're going to cause an accident. It's going to cause issues for the plows. So they're telling people, hey, it's, it's bad out there. Yeah. I mean, realistic winter, it, it cracks me up because I feel like every year this happens, I'm 100% the person in the wintertime that's like, I don't care if it's minus zero or minus 20. I don't care. It's snowing and it's pretty and I like it. And I just, I don't know. I just enjoy the snow. I'm the person that reads other people's posts on like Facebook and Twitter where they're going, oh, 54 more days until spring and this is going to be over. And my first thought is always, why do you live where the air hurts your face if you don't like it? Like, what <sighs> keeps you here if you, you hate this? Because like, realistically... The reality of it is, is we experience this for at least three to four months out of the year. If you yeah. don't like it, there's a lot of states where it doesn't happen. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, you can just go live in one of those flyover states where they get no weather at all. I just, I would just stay inside. I'd have to, I'd have to be a prepper if I lived there. I would have to get my house just full of canned goods and, and stuff that I could eat that that wasn't that wasn't perishables because I'm not leaving. I, I'm not leaving the house at all. Yeah. And that's a lot of what happens up here in the wintertime. I mean, like even us, we don't leave every day when it's snowing like this. But I think there's also a little bit and maybe that's why I like living in a small town. Maybe that's part of the reason why I like winter. I think days like this really force you, you know, to slow down. 
They force you to do nothing. They force you to just sit back and be like, well, it is what it is. This is how today is going to be. We can't go anywhere. You're eating canned soup today. Like, <laughs> it's, it is what it is. And you, you sit there and you kind of just, I don't know. It's kind of that everything in life is so fast paced and everybody's always on this like, go, 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 go. And I got to do and this and blah, 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 blah. You can't do that when it's snowing like this. Everything you thought you were going to do, you can't. You can't go to the grocery store because they're not open. You can't go out to dinner. It's not open. You have to figure out how to do those things without being that massive manic part of society. I just you, starve. You, you wouldn't starve. Well, you might. They're, most of the delivery places are closing right now, too. So. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever taken snow and used it for ice in your drink? Um, no, but we have taken snow and put our drinks, like bottled drinks, in the snow to keep them cold. Mm, yeah, that's not as fun. Uh, have you ever made a snow cone with the snow? It's fresh and free. I don't know that we've ever done that. That. Yeah, you should do that. I don't understand. Like, it's free snow cones. You just provide the the sugary toppings, and you could just get that free ice. Yeah, but if you see what the sky looks like at night over Alpena because of Lafarge and Abitibi and how green it is, then you wonder is that stuff coming down in the rain and the snow? And I don't want to eat that. It's from <laughs> yeah. I guess yeah. I guess I don't want to eat anything from Michigan. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I mean, that's not true though. That licorice you sent me was delicious. And you've probably never had that had that before, I've huh? I've never had licorice taste like that ever in my life. Ever yeah. in my life. That's a company called Better Made. They're out of Detroit. I'm kind of envious. Like, when you send me these packages of things, there's always stuff from Michigan that's really, really good. And I feel like California doesn't have any, like, local stuff. I'm sure there's stuff out there I just don't know about. But, like, no famous local stuff that I know of that's like, oh, you got to try Mr. Zippy Long John's is, you know, like sausage links like i Doesn't, don't like we don't have that california makes avocados that's true we do have good <laughs> avocados michigan does have a lot of Mich I, I, michigan is one of those states so i think you have a lot of people that are diehard michiganders and they're proud to be from here and proud to start companies here and like i think that all started back in the day when we were like the auto capital of the world or whatever i think people right. just i think people in michigan take pride that they're from michigan Maybe more than other states, maybe not more than New Yorkers, but <laughs> maybe more than other states to like a point. And I think that that just gives people a different passion about things they do here. And it, I don't know, it like sparks them to start these companies. And right. we don't there are a lot of Michigan brands and Michigan companies that make amazing things. And it, it same thing, it always blows my mind when I start looking for new ones. And I'm like, I had no idea these companies existed, but now I have to try all the things. I just Googled like famous foods in California and it said refried beans is what the research result came with. Oh, right. Beans. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going through the list here. We have some, what looks to be stale popcorn in those like circus bags. Uh, we have the caramel dipped apples are from here, I guess. And cotton candy. Huh? Yeah. There's not. You invented there? Uh, I think it's from here. Huh? Yeah, we don't. Yeah, I guess things didn't really pop up like I thought they would. I thought they'd be like, "Oh, A and W root beer's factory is from California," but no, no, we just turn out Hollywood movies. So <laughs> you made me curious, though. Now I want to know where A and W root beer was started. Mm, let's guess before we let's guess. I guess that it is nowhere on the West Coast. I I bet it's an East Coast thing. Like. I don't know, he kind of looks like the Hershey bear, but I don't want to, I'm, I'm going with Pennsylvania, even though I have no clue. I always thought it was somewhere around where we're at, but I don't, because we, we used to have a whole lot of NWs, but I don't know. Yeah, see, we never did. We had one or two here and there, but we never oh, did. Oh, no way. It's a Coca-Cola company, I think, so back east. What On June 20th, are you ready for this? Yes. On June 20th, 1919, Roy W. Allen opened a roadside root beer stand in Lottie, California. Ooh, <laughs> so I am right. <laughs> I guess a and root beer is from California. Wow, what a pull. <laughs> uh oh, I and, have uh, an idea. Coming up next, I will give you guys uh, this week's lotto number. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a pull. Okay, well, uh, so I guess... Uh, Next time I send you a box of stuff, I'll, I'll send you some A&W root beer, <laughs> which is actually just going to be in a can from the supermarket like you could get at your house. That's hilarious. Well, there you go, people. <laughs> so I guess things are from, from, from California. 
Besides avocados. Besides avocados. It was avocados. The, the internet said refried beans and uh, A&W repair. So. Isn't California like one of the largest producers of certain types of nuts too? Yeah, D's, D's had the biggest company for a while. And then I think Planters is here too. Let me see. Hold on a second here. Yeah, I think we do. Because we have a lot of farming stuff out here. A lot of oranges, you know, California oranges and a lot of a lot of poultry and stuff. So we do, I guess we do do a lot of vegetables and meats and stuff out here. Okay, Jess. So throughout history, comic books, movies, or book books, all good superheroes have an origin story. So I figured on the podcast, uh, this should be no exception. We had a lot of people ask us on our Facebook page, um, probably it's probably a tie between why did we start to create videos in the first place and how do we know each other? So I'll let you start. You tell us at home for everybody who doesn't know, cause I'm not sure if you've ever explained this or anything on your videos. I don't know if I have, but why did you decide to turn the camera on? Originally? Like mm-hmm. why did I start in the very first place? Yeah. Like, like what year? Ago? <laughs> uh, um, I don't know. YouTube came out in what, like 2006 and I had a YouTube channel and like I uploaded videos to it, but it was more or less that place where you put videos so you can send them to your friends so they could see what you're doing or send them to your family so they could see what you're doing. And of course, nobody could even get them to load back then because it was all really slow internet. And I, I think I have told this story probably like in live streams and stuff before, but the long story shortened version of it is there was a channel it's still a channel. It's called The Mean Kitty, and it's uh, Corey Williams from SMP Films. It was his channel, and they put up a video on The Mean Kitty channel. It was him and Nathan Wills, who has since passed away. They put up, like, this two-minute-long video where they made, like, this impromptu little song on a keyboard, and they called it Cats of Autumn. And this was back in the day of YouTube when you could actually do video responses. Yes. So they said, here's a link to download the song. Go ahead and use it for free. We want to see your pets. Use this music and upload video responses with your pets. So I had had a bunch of clips of Shiloh and Shelby, like, playing in the snow and doing different things. And I'm like, oh, I'll just upload this video and it'll be it'll be fun and i think i had like 300 subscribers at the time on that channel um so i put together this video and uploaded it did it as a video response went to bed woke up the next morning and it had like again this is 2009 youtube it had a thousand views both of them had commented on it about how cute the dogs were or whatever and I honestly don't know what happened, but I was like, I want to do this. And this was back when, so it was 2009, so like Philip DeFranco was doing his thing. Not like he's doing it now, but kind of. Michael Buckley was had a channel. There were a lot of people that were doing things on YouTube. And like, I don't know, it just felt like something I wanted to try. So, Well, were you, were you into technology always before all this? Or what made, what made it so you opened up the computer and you decided to get entertainment from there instead of the television? Who was winning at the time? I, gosh, I don't even know. <laughs> I think, like, I used the internet a lot because we had moved away. So when we moved away and lived in Arizona for two and a half years, I learned how to do a lot of things online when it came to, like, sending audio files and uh, doing, like, online calls because it was cheaper than remember long distance phone calls yes i could talk to my family and stuff and like that was kind of where you know i had started to learn those things played a lot of online games played way too many online (laughs) games for way too long and i don't know youtube just became a thing and i just i started subscribing to people and enjoyed it and it was i don't know i don't know why or what really like made me want to try it like i didn't try it thinking oh this is going to be an amazing thing i literally just wanted to do it because i thought it was going to be fun right and then having mild success right away yeah and that was kind of the thing like i i had a thousand views on that video and it was just a couple of days later i sat down and i'm like i gotta think of a name and i didn't want to like first it was like we'll call it you know shiloh and shelby the husky and then there was that part of me that was like well because we had almost lost shiloh gosh just a couple years before that she'd almost died So I kind of had that thought and I'm like, I don't want to name it something. And then what if she dies? What if that? So I don't want it to be tied to any of the dog's actual names. Like, what do we call it? Well, people always made the joke to us that we'd gone to the dogs because, you know, Jamie and I had been together for so long and some of our other friends were having kids and we weren't having kids, but we still, we had dogs. So every once in a while people would make that joke. Oh, you've gone to the dogs. 
because apparently if you have more than one husky, you're crazy. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Probably. No. So I kind of came up with that. I was going to call it hiking huskies was the <laughs> other one. Like that was the other name that I had thought of. And I don't know that I've ever shared that, but that was the other name that I had thought of. Like, cause I'm like, oh, we can walk the dogs different places and take them on hikes and they'll be known as the hiking huskies. Like, but it just didn't sound right. Right. And then I just said, gone to the snow dogs. And it was like, I get that. It just sounded right. Although a lot of people still say it wrong. They say gone with the snow dogs. I get that all the time. Interesting. Is it regional or is it just a mistake? I hear it all the time. I, I don't know why. Maybe it sounds better to some people, but yeah, I don't know. I just kind of started and put up a couple videos. But like when I started, it wasn't like, I'm just going to do this and it's going to be fun. Like I started and it was like, I'm going to do two videos a week. I'm going to do them on these oh, days. Wow. <laughs> I'm gonna, like I like went into it going, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to do it. I started the Facebook, the Twitter. There was no Instagram back then. Um, but I like started all the social media sites that you would hear all these other YouTubers going, check me out here and check me out here. I'm like, oh, I can do that. So kind of just went at it and it became apparently my entire life <laughs> yes and it was good timing i mean the yeah, timing was yeah. good yeah it was it was a wild ride i i don't know if you remember back in the day when uh youtube used to have the honors system like you would get awards like if you were like the number one video they used to break everything up into like categories so it was like the pets and animals category or the comedy category and if your video started to do well it would say, oh, you're number two in the pets and animals category. And you could actually Ooh. go to the homepage, click on pets and animals, and there would be your video. No. It was kind of like, do you remember that? No, uh, I do not. I was around with the video responses and stuff when I first started in 2007, maybe, 2000, the end of 2006. But I think I was so far off the ranking system that like I didn't even pay attention to that. It was a really cool feature that they had, and you used to get these notifications, and it would tell you, like, underneath the video, it would say number one, you know, most watched in pets and animals, number five, most viewed in pets and animals. And I actually, at one point in time, and I'm really glad I did it now, I used to copy those stats and put them in my video description. So on some of my older videos, I can go back and see where they ranked, like when they actually ranked and where they were. I That's something I really miss about YouTube. You used to be able to like go to the homepage and you could just click on pets and animals and it would show you you could either click on most viewed, most liked, or most recent. See, but that's you cool. click you could click pets and animals, most recent. And it and you could refresh it and it would constantly show you the most recent only pets and animals category videos. I don't know why they ever got rid of that, because it was the coolest feature. Cause you could break it up. You want to yes. watch news? Here's the most viewed news, here's the most liked news, here's the most recent news videos or comedy videos or whatever. Oh, yeah. I, I do remember those days. It was so specific on what you could search for. It was just better. That was back when YouTube was like, look what we're doing. And like, look at these numbers. And you're ranked on this. And this is how you rank on this vertical. Because everybody was so like, this is what we're doing. And I can't believe this new thing. And now it's like everybody's done it. So nobody's impressed with it no more. So it's definitely a far different platform today than it is, than it was when we started. Yes. That I mean, fret page used to be so good. The front, I, we made the front page in 2012. We got picked. At the Gone to the Snow Dogs channel was in the On the Rise competition. I think this was before I knew you, too. Yeah, uh, yes, yes. Yeah, it was. We got picked for the On the Rise competition, which was a competition they used to do. It was like up and coming YouTubers. And I don't, I think we had, I don't even know. We didn't have that many subscribers. We were a very small channel, even in 2012. And I'd been doing it for so long. And, uh, they emailed me and they're like, you can't tell anybody, but here's what's going on and we're going to do this and there's going to be voting and we want you to ask your audience to vote for you. So we kind of had to do this campaign thing and we're like, vote for us for On The Rise because I don't really know what it is, but it's kind of cool. And then the day before they were going to announce it, they emailed us and they said, you won. We need five videos from you that you want us to share on the homepage. And I'm like, What? Like, yep, you're going to be right on the homepage. So I had to give them, I have a screenshot of it somewhere. No pressure. It was the coolest thing. I'll find it. I know I have it somewhere. But it was, they put five of our videos. They, I think they picked a few and then they had me pick a few. And they put these videos on the front page of YouTube. And I, I want to say it was something crazy. We gained like, 
I don't know, even know. I think it was like four or five thousand subscribers in the matter of like two days. Dang, and that was two thousand seven money. So that's that was a lot for back then. Twelve. 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 Dang. Yeah. See, even then, that still wasn't. It still wasn't as big as it is now. No, I applied for that part when the partner program became something that you could apply for. I remember that. Oh, I applied over and over. I got denied so many times, and then I still have that original email when I got accepted with wow. going to the snow dogs. That's so cool. I, I remember when they announced like, you're going to be able to make pennies off of this. I didn't even try to apply because I don't know. I don't know why I was using it for different reasons, but yeah, I always thought that was so amazing. That was such the talk for a while. Everywhere is like, wow. These people are actually going to get revenue from their videos. And back then nobody understood it. Like mm -hmm. nobody, you could tell people you were doing these things. Like I would tell people, Oh yeah, I made a hundred dollars this month from YouTube videos. And they're going, pfft, whatever their heads sideways every time like what yeah. yeah and then you try to explain it to people that didn't you know like now youtube is everywhere everybody knows what youtube is you know back then it wasn't people didn't know they didn't understand the platform they didn't understand right. what it was it was just it was so i mean it's still new it's still a new concept but it's not but now everybody knows what it is Exactly. And this was before, this is before iPhones were what they were today. I mean, I remember everybody looking at me so strange when I would take out my camera and flip it around back towards my face and everybody would lock up. Everybody would pause. Everybody around me would look at me like, what the heck are you doing? And now it's everybody, nobody cares. Nobody cares at all. Filming in public now is nothing like it was back then. It would make your heart it's, race so fast. It would like, because you didn't want people to stop you from what you were doing and ask you what you were doing because you were trying to get stuff done. And then you didn't want everybody staring at you and you're like whispering to the camera as you're walking through a crowd of people. You're like, okay, well, here we are at this waterfall and I can't really see anything because all these people are listening to me. <laughs> yes, and you're like, man, I feel so self-conscious. And then after a while, you like, you don't care anymore. But yeah, those were those times where people would just freeze up or you turn it on a friend or a family member and they would just lock up every time. You could never, ever count on anybody to come through with a punchline or a joke on anything. They just look at you like, what is happening? This is not what I'm used to. Yeah, and it was it was five years into it. Was it five years into it? 2011 no not five years three years into it i think it was 2011 when i started the vlog channel and it started do you remember veda yes. vlog every day in april it yes. started at veda because everybody on the dogs channel wanted us to do veda and it was so bad <laughs> it was so but i did it every day for the 30 days or whatever and then it was like mystery guitar man was doing a vlog at the time and he was calling it something like the maybe daily vlog so there were other people that were making these vlogs and at the end it would just say maybe daily because <laughs> it's maybe daily so it became like a thing where there was a group of people that were doing maybe daily vlogs so i kind of like jumped into that for a little while uh -huh. and then i almost did the orbit which was a 365 days you were supposed to vlog straight 365 days they were calling it the orbit there was a big group of people like a community that was doing it I almost jumped on that, but I was working full time at the time and it was just, it was not something I thought I could pull off, but the vlogs in the beginning are so bad. Oh yeah. I, I know how that is. They're so bad. <laughs> but there was no model. There was no business model to go off of. There was no, the only thing you could do is like try to tell it like a movie. There was so much dead space. Like if I were to go back and look at my videos that were 10, 12 minutes long, those are three minute long videos. There's so much dead space, panning, panning seconds of panning to wherever you're going to think you're going to talk about next. It was just so bad. Like I felt like I was talking like I was at gunpoint. <laughs> yeah, 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 pretty much. Yeah, they were, they were bad. How long, how long did it take before... When you made the videos before you recognized your voice sounding like you and like, man, because in the very beginning, you're like, dude, I sound so weird. And then there's like this one time where all of a sudden you're just like, oh, that's just what I sound like. And, and it's not a big deal no more. Did, the, did that happen to you? No, I never had that. My dad had a video camera when I was younger. So like I'd heard my voice on film before. And then like when I was little, I used to I was one of the I was the first girl born on my dad's side of the family. So like my cousin Tommy was older than me. Mm -hmm. And then. Uh, or not on my dad, on my mom's side of the family. On my dad's side of the family, I think I was the second or something. And either way, I was the one that they would stand up on the tables at family gatherings and they would make me sing songs. Oh, nice. <laughs> I was the kid that didn't care. So I don't know. I just didn't have that. Maybe it's because my parents didn't let me have that fear. Like they pushed me to not have that fear, but I didn't have that 
that fear. And then I'd heard my voice so many times from like, I would record myself on cassette tapes and play them back. Remember cassette tapes? <laughs> I do. And wh- what, what would be on these cassette tapes? Are you singing like, like uh, Whitney Houston songs or, or, or what's happening on these cassettes? Well, I'm a little bit older than, than the Whitney Houston song. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But like, are you singing these cassettes? Sometimes. And sometimes I was literally just talking. And it, like that was, it was, I had a friend of mine that uh, my mom used to babysit and we would record ourselves on these cassette tapes just talking. Interesting. Okay. So that, that. So like, I have heard my voice so many times in the past. Like when I started doing that and hearing myself, I never had a problem with that. Right. That wasn't a hurdle. I know that's a hurdle for a lot of people. I, I, I was okay with that. it. It just, I just didn't sound like, I, I like, that's not what I sound like. I don't sound like that. And then after, I don't know, so many videos, all of a sudden one time I'm like, oh yeah, that's just me now. Like I, it doesn't sound foreign to me. I, I don't know. It, it just sounded really weird in the beginning. Right. But now it kind of makes I, sense I, that I, you want to still make videos and stuff because you used to just sit there and record yourself talking. So now, uh, now they give you pennies for it. Yay. Penny. <laughs> Yay. Pennies. <laughs> Unless it's January, and then you starve to death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know how that goes. That's whatever happens first. (laughs) Do you ever see yourself not making videos? I don't know. I enjoy it less now than I used to, but I think it's because I look at things so differently now. Like, there's a huge part of me that wishes I literally could still look at it like I did when I was working a full-time job and where I literally was going to work and working 40 to 60 hours a week, coming home, filming videos, editing, trying to get these things up, trying to make sure, like, I had content for the dog's channel, content for the vlog channel at one t- point in time, content for the gaming channel. Like, I right. don't even know how I did those things when I was working a full-time job where I feel like I can't keep it together now. Like, would I? Do I ever see myself stopping? I honestly have no idea. I feel like something's got to give, and I've either got to find a new, like, creative outlet to get that spark back. And I don't want to be that typical creator that's like, oh, I have creator burnout. No, but it that, is. No, it's not. That's life. There's literally life. Everybody goes through things in life where they're like, I hate my job. I don't want to do this anymore. It's not. I, w- I wouldn't call it burnout. Like for me, it's just life. It's just a part of life. It's just a hurdle. You've got to figure out how to get over it, you know? And if that means for some creators stopping making content for a month, by all means, that's what you should do. But think about it realistically. If you had a normal job, you can't just not go to work for a month. <laughs> so that's true. you do that. Like, like, and that's whenever I feel like maybe I should take a break. The other part of me goes, that's silly. If you were working for somebody else, you can't take a month off of work. You can't do that. So how do you figure out this problem a different way? Right. And right. I think that, like, for me, you know, a lot of it is that sometimes it's just talking to other people, venting about frustrations to people that get it. Sometimes that just is like you get to the end of the day and you're like, all right, I feel a lot better today. And I feel like I can, you know, take on anything today. And then sometimes it's just finding a new creative outlet. Like, I know you hate it, but. I like TikTok. It's stupid and it's, I feel no stress with it. I feel like I can just make a dumb little video and it's fun and the feedback is always fun and the people on there are funny and I don't know, like that's my, that's my break, I guess you could say. Yeah, I think for you it's a free outlet without metrics. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I think you're weighed down by metrics a lot. So I think that's free for you. I try to use it and... I, I, I just don't – I'm manic, and I, I don't get it. I, I can't do it. I, I feel old. I feel old. That TikTok <laughs> makes me feel old. I, I don't understand it. I laughed at the stuff. I laughed at your TikToks. That, that was good. That was good. But I just don't – I don't get it. I don't get it. It's just a different way to create. It's just a different – it's just a different platform. I feel like, I mean, it's huge. I couldn't believe how, how big it actually is. It's a huge platform. There's so many people on it. There's so much reach you can attain on it. But I feel like it's still in its infancy and it's still something that's so new and people are just having fun with it. I mean, there are still, there's still drama on TikTok, just like everywhere else where they're saying people are not show their videos aren't getting showed where they're supposed to and this isn't happening in a notification. And I'm like, oh, so all the same. Yeah. Stuff. YouTube is still here too, but I feel like there's a lot less of it. Like you don't, you don't, you don't see it as much. I think I'll always create things just because 
I don't think I know how to stop. <laughs> I don't, you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't think, I don't think stopping is an option. But like, if it were to all come crashing down tomorrow and for some reason I wanted to quit, I'd just go work for somebody else or start a new company. I don't think I'll ever work for somebody else ever again. I don't, I don't think it'll ever happen. I don't think so. I think you'll just evolve with whatever comes and goes when YouTube's gone and Dick Doc's gone and facebook's gone it'll just be whatever the next thing is like it, it, you'll just evolve with that i think i don't think you'll ever stop creating i have too much fun with it like yeah like like i was saying you know there's a lot of times where it's like you have that bit, especially now because it's winter time and we're not traveling as much as we're not doing as many things i'm always like well, everything it's the same every day how many times can i show the dogs running around in a snowstorm how many times can i talk about the fact that we're at home because the weather's bad but you know i I look at it that way, but then when the content goes up and the videos go up and you get the comments and I look at it and go, we did the same thing yesterday. The audience doesn't see it like that. The audience sees it as I let them into my lives, right. into our lives. I let them in to see what we're doing and we're sharing what we're doing and they appreciate that. And I, those are the things that like I constantly have to remind myself of. It's, it's not about the way that I see it. It's the way everybody else sees it. It'll never be perfect because perfection isn't a thing. Nothing's perfect. So it's not about if I think it's good enough. It's is everybody else going to, you know, how are they going to perceive it? And right. if they enjoy it, then it's good enough. Especially though, the thing that I've seen is is we were vloggers for a long time. You know, we, we, we did vlogging very early. and. Right. What it's turned into now at the height and the forefront of vlogging is monsters. There's monsters there. Like the Jake Pauls and stuff like that of like, this is what vlogging's turned into. It's It's gone like off the rails. It's like vlogging got into drugs really bad. Yeah. And this is what, what's happened to like our medium. I wish it was called something else because I feel like what they're doing isn't vlogging. They're not sharing their lives. They're right. not sharing who they are. They're putting on a show. It's a look at me video. Yeah, and they, they are. They're putting on a show. They wake up and they go, we're going to do this, and this is how we're going to do it, and we're going to have these camera guys, and they're going to be here, and this is what's going to happen. That's not a vlog. That's a scripted show. Right. You, you're making a scripted show, and I feel like that, that, like you were saying, there's this crossover that happened that, I don't know, it should have been called something else. <laughs> it it should have, because I feel like they that's the expectation now. Like, my last video I made, like, I had to make it super manic just to, like, turn heads, because that's what's expected now. And it used to not be that way. It used to be a come, like, follow me around video where we chilled out and did stuff. And now I feel, and it's only in my head because no one's ever said it, that the expectation is more manic. Like, more manic, more Fortnite dancing. Faster. Everybody wants it faster. Right. It has to be faster. It has to be, I don't want to sit here for 10 minutes and watch what you did. I want you to do it in four minutes. But I want to. I want you to show me all the same things you did. I mean, it's the David Dobrik style. The, right. The, yeah, the Jake Paul style, the Tanner Fox style. Like, those are the things. But even at that, if you look at it just a couple years ago, even that wasn't the vlog. The vlog became the Casey Neistat style. Everybody wanted that cinematic movie picturesque style videos so you saw yes. a lot of vloggers turn to that the peter mckinnon the casey yes. nice that that heavy style. drone yeah but even now it's changed again and now it's it's manic people expect the manic era yeah people expect manic and if you're not manic your your vlog's not it's it's hard to say that it's not going to grow. Even family vloggers, like I've watched a lot of family vloggers for a long time, like uh, Daily Bumps. <laughs> I watched them for a long time. I don't really watch them anymore because their their channel kind of started to get stale. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing what they did. What they did was amazing. It was the right thing for their business and the, the right thing for their brand for what they did. But they went from doing vlogs to more kid videos. Right. Their videos are more targeted towards kids. And they do more of like the slime videos and the Orbeez videos and the whatever they can put in the title that's highly searchable by kids. Right. And I get that because they have the cast members to do it. All they're missing is the orbs and slimes because that's what's really popular right now. And people get bored. Like I get bored making those vlogs sometimes. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I do too. But that's when I usually like sit down and go, but you know what? Not everybody lives in an area where it's going to be minus 20 degrees and the snow is going to yes. pile up 12 more inches. And I have to remember that, that people enjoy watching that stuff because it's stuff that they don't see every day. Right. I may see it every day, but not everybody does. 
that's the hard part. And you try to beat that in my head. You've tried to beat that in my head for years when I complain to you all the time, like, Hey, I'm stay. I just, I can't follow myself around to work and back home and making dinner anymore. Like this is ridiculous. And you always tell me that same thing. Always tell me the same thing. And it's true. Cause when I do put up a video of it, people respond to it very well. But I think the other thing is, is there's two parts of it. And I, I know I've said this like a bazillion times to lots of people, but you either want it or you don't. If you want it, you're going to make the content. You're going to figure it out. You're going to, you're going to find your stride. Yes. If you don't, you're going to do something else. Like you have to have the passion for it, which sounds so cliche, but it's so true. If you don't enjoy it and you don't have that passion, for it, nobody's making you do it. Nobody's making you make videos. It's not like, like for you, you don't do this full time. I do this full time, but at the same time, nobody's making me do it. If I want to quit tomorrow, I can quit tomorrow. I just have to find a different job. Like, but I don't want to, like, I, I enjoy it. I do have a passion for it. So if you don't have that passion you have to figure out what's the next thing that's going to really like spark your interest. And the other thing I think people don't realize is you can lose passion for something. Like you can get it. That's okay. It's okay to get bored with things. It's okay. Like, cause I know you did uh, videos on video or whatever for a long time before even like YouTube. So you've done videos way longer than I have. That was a lot of videos. There was yep. there was over 300 of those video videos, and they all had to be entertaining, and they were. That was probably my proudest work. That's when I was the most, like, hungry. Right. Was then, and, like, the possibilities of, like, oh, my gosh, this thing I really love is starting to, like, become popular and mainstream. And But, yeah, I got burned out. I mean, look at this last year. I did not – there was one – there came one point last year where the thought of me picking up a camera and spinning it around in my face made me sick. Like, I do not – you will never get another word of me again. You will never. And then I felt like that faded away this like last few months. I felt a lot better about it now. And I think people need to realize that that's okay, that there's nothing wrong with that. Right. I think there's like this expectation in people. Like when I see all these YouTubers making these I'm burnt out videos or I need to take a mental health break videos. They don't even need to. There's no they don't have to tell anybody that they don't have to just do it. Just take your break. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. I, think I feel like everybody feels like they have to explain everything to everybody anymore. And, you know, you don't have to. If you no, want to take a break, just take a break. I, I mean, when when Oakley passed away, I can't tell you the messages. Everybody's like, oh, we understand if you want to take a break and you want to take some time off. And in the back of my head, I'm like, the, literally the worst thing I could do right now is stop making anything. Right. Like, I don't want to stop now. Now would be detrimental. Like, now would be, it would be horrifying. I can't stop now because what am I going to do? Exactly. I can't do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So it, it, you know, it becomes an outlet for me, but I do things differently, I guess, than a lot of people. Yeah. And it's all, it's all phases. Like I said, like, like last year I hated everything. And then this year I'm like, Oh, this seems fun again. Except you keep forgetting to post on Instagram. Mm, those are few and far between lately. I do really good on my stories, though. You guys should, uh, you guys should watch my Instagram stories. That's where all the that's where all the funny is at lately. Is the, is the stories, the the posts the posts on Instagram seem a little more strategic. And that's that's the thing about making the videos too. Is like there you, there was a time where we could do whatever we wanted and nobody cared and everybody loved everything that you did. And then there was this tipping point of subscribers where you now felt obligated or you yeah. don't. But a lot of people do, and I did too. I I think it was after the last visit from you. I think I doubled in subscribers. And then now I felt like, oh my gosh, you guys all signed up for this like contract. And now I have to like deliver every video or else. Yeah. If that makes sense. I think I f feel that way a lot with the dogs channel and I try yes. not to, but I feel like there's a lot of the times where I'm looking at these other, and that's a big thing. Like don't compare yourself to other people. I'll tell you not to do it, but uh, do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of times where I'll be doing that and I'll be looking at other, other people's channels and I just, my brain just goes, why I've been doing this for so long and I've mm. done the exact same thing or I did this before. Why did it take off here and not there? What is the difference? How can I make this more like this? And that's like, that's such a damaging thing. Don't try to make yourself like somebody else. Don't look at somebody else's videos and be like, oh, well, they did this, so I should do this. And now I'm not saying like not taking like trending videos that are trending that people are requesting. Like I did the hugging my dog for too long challenge because I got messages blowing up from people asking me to do it. And I saw um, Haru the Sheba had done it 
like three months ago. And I had people messaging me and leaving comments. When are you going to do this? When are you going to do this? I'm not saying don't do the popular things or the trendy things or the challenging things. You should do them on your channel once in a while because it does, it brings new people to your channel, but you can't go to other people's channels and blatantly take their ideas and copy them. I'm not going to say it doesn't work because I've seen channels do it and it does work, but I don't think there's a longevity behind it. I think that when, when you're copying somebody else constantly, I feel like that's harder than doing something that you love on your own. Anybody can copy. I can trace anything out of a coloring book, but can I draw it on my own? Those are two totally different things. Right. And I fall into that. I, I I fall into that. I watch what's going on with the vlogs. And like I said, like I watch like Logan Paul or like a Dobrik. I'm like, that's what vlogging is. Well, my stuff's junk. I'm done now. Nobody wants to watch me because they have 40 other people they're already subscribed to. And mine doesn't have a fifth gear in it. I'm, I'm stuck in third with my chill vlogs. So... I do that. I compare myself all the time because I want to play the game. Like when I say play yeah. the game, I, I don't mean earn pennies, but like, hey, man, like I think I'm pretty entertaining over the years. And like I want my stuff to get like to be fun and stuff and relevant. You know, I'm old now. I feel like I don't want to be irrelevant. And I compare myself to those people and it's it's wrong. But like I do. And then it makes me oh, it makes me not want to create for some reason. Instead of being like, oh, that's them and good for them. And like I should just do me. But I find myself just like taking my ball and going home like, oh, well, like I guess I'm aged out like. I guess I'm aged out of this sport now and that's just what the kids are doing these days and I guess my videos are just my videos and that's just what you know where they're where they die. I think that's the damage a lot of people do to themselves when it comes to things like this. I, I really do. And like you know, I've talked to you about this before. I've talked to other friends about this before. That's one of the reasons I I still in the back of my insane little brain want to make another channel where I talk about the realities of creating and talk about, you know, I don't necessarily want to teach you how to be a creator. I can't teach you how to be. I mean, maybe I could. I could teach you things. I can't teach you how to be a creator. You have to learn that on your own. But I can teach you the reality of the behind the the, the what to do and what not to do to try to make it better. I think you should. You're, you're a veteran creator now. You're, you're past the early cycle because everything has a life cycle. You're past the early cycles of of what this is like you're over the hump on that you're a veteran now you've done it a lot of years like you should tell your story you should you should tell your story why there's a lot of relevance to it still why you can still take what you have to say and not just be mindful of it but you can apply it to what's happening now i, I think you should do it i think it's it's i do have this really cool room down here mm -hmm. with these really cool lights that i'm sitting in and a really cool setup <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should do it. You should do it like the people that are in the robe with like the pipe and then the, they're like sitting there with the fireplace and then it's like, well, and you have like, <laughs> you have like that like nightstand next to you and like the like wine glass that you hold with your fingers all fancy and you should just tell, you just, just tell your story. I just don't want to be that YouTube guru. I don't want to be that. I'm going to teach you how to like, I don't want to, I want to be different than that. I don't want to be, you know, and like, I have a lot of respect for these people. So when I throw out these names, don't think I hate these people. I'm friends with a lot of these people, but like, I don't want to be Roberto Blake. I don't uh -huh. want to be Daryl Eves. I don't want to, I don't want to be those people. I want to be something different than that. But at the same time, I have a YouTube creators group with almost 10,000 people in it, plus other YouTube creator groups, plus pet influencer groups. And I, I do feel like I have things to offer. I just, you remember just have to package it. Said, well, you remember how earlier I said you either want it or you don't? How long have I been talking about this? Well, it's okay because it's not like <laughs> it's not like because you want something, you have to do it r right away. I think if you just package it differently, then it would be good. Here's the thing about you, Jess. I've learned a lot of things about you, and there's no stopping you, and you're going to end up doing it because it's in your brain, and the only way you're going to be able to purge that so thought is to do it, and then you're going to have to do it better than everybody else, and then it's just going to be another... <laughs> uh, it's just going to be a headache for you in the long run <laughs> when you thought it was going to be a fun thing, and then it just turned into a, a bunch of work. Maybe if you just... Uh, yeah, if you repackaged it, I think you could do well. Besides, there's not very many female influencers that are telling it like it is. Because the people that do it now are good and stuff like that, but they're very finger pointish of like, this yeah. is, look, 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 let me unroll mine out on the table, and then you, here's how you guys can unroll yours out too. And I think you'd have a different angle on it. That's kind of, you know, like, for, but at the same time, is that what people want? Um, it's a gap that's not being filled. It's a vertical that's not there, which is the women being able to communicate to you how to climb whatever thing that you're doing 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I don't think it's so. On my, it's on my list. Yeah, I know. You're so overpacked with stuff, so I, I get it. Time to do things. But it's just, do I want to fill it with more work? Do I do I really want to work more? Right. That was kind of why, that was, that's why the Arcade Snow Dogs channel is dead. I don't think it'll ever come back. I don't, I think I'm... I'm done telling myself that for some reason I like to play video games. I do like to play video games with my friends and I don't like to talk a million miles an hour while I do it. It's not how I want to play video games. I'm not a gamer girl. Maybe 12 years ago when we used to play Ultima Online for hours on end and we ran a guild and we like back then, yeah, I would consider myself more of a gamer. Now, it's just not it's not my thing. It's not what I'm into. I don't need a gaming channel. Well, that's okay. You, and you don't you don't have to do that because it but, just didn't work out. You tried it and it didn't work. But there's the pressure of the same thing like you were saying. There's a channel sitting there with 23,000 subscribers. People subscribe to watch Jamie and I play video games or to watch us do things. And now it's just sitting there. Right. But the good news is for them people, they're not lost because they're also tethered to you in, in other places. That's true. But uh, yeah, I, I, I get what you, what you mean about that. You made me talk for too long about my youtube channel you didn't tell your youtube story mm, yes well just at this point in the podcast i thought we were gonna be a lot further along than this but uh i like i like how the conversation was going so i think we should wrap it up here and then maybe next episode i will tell you uh why i started creating videos and we'll go on from there so thank you for listening uh you guys can always catch us every wednesday on your favorite podcast app that's stitcher soundcloud spotify whatever android uses and now itunes and you can ask your questions on the thread on our Facebook page at Country Mouse City Mouse Podcast and follow us on Instagram at CC Mouse Podcast. And uh, we will see you next week. Same mouse time, uh, same mouse podcast. See you later. Bye.